Um, if not, we'll troubleshoot as we go. Um, Matt, anything you want to say as we get going? Yeah, I, uh, I don't know if you want to peek at the agenda that I'd sent uh, earlier, but I can run through it real fast. Uh, today, uh, we are getting our school presentations, one from uh, Red Oak and one from JCTC. And then we're also going to highlight, there you go, thank you, uh, the athletic uh, work, athletic department's work. And then you guys had requested some information on uh, uh, some follow-up conversation that we uh, wanted some follow-up conversation on uh, some maintenance recommendations moving forward. And then I was just going to give you a really brief update on uh, graduation ceremony and, and budget. Uh, information for next year. Then you see there are also listed uh, future uh, discussion items, um, and those were those that we had spoken about uh, the last time we met. And then I just put some uh, uh, upcoming dates that uh, you'll definitely want on your, your calendar. So other than that, Mr. Scrivener, I was going to hand it over to Andy McNeil. All right. Just keep me in check as I'm going here. I'm navigating Zoom a little bit and making myself more familiar with. Can everyone see the, uh, Andy's uh, talking points here? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Hi, Andy. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, first, let me apologize for not being here when I was supposed to be. I had the flu, which now I think might have been coronavirus. I don't know. Um, and it's no less intimidating doing this with a Zoom than it is doing it in the central office. So if this is if this is going to be a way to do it, then let's not do it. Well, let me make sure I'm recording this first. That way, if you mess up, we've got something to kind of dine out on for a while. Right. That'll be perfect. Yes. Yeah, so. so you guys have a copy of my um, our little questions, what's going well, all that stuff. So I'm not going to read all of those to you. But two, I really want to point out to you, though, uh, is our reduced novice rate. We have really been working on getting kids out of novice. Um, and in our last round of math testing, which feels like it was 100 years ago, um, we actually had uh, two groups or two categories that were less than the 10%, which has always kind of been the goal for all of us. Um, and it, at 11.2%, uh, which is just a tiny bit over where we want overall um, in reading. So we've been really, been really happy with the kind of work that our teachers have been doing in reducing those novice rates. And we attribute that a lot to the RICU work we're doing with reading and then the acute work that we're doing with math, the intensive care units that we're doing with both those in um, the other one I really kind of wanted you guys to, to hear a little bit more about is our Check and Connect initiative. We're using that with our PBIS, our Positive Behavior Intervention Systems. Um, a guidance counselor has created mentors with lots of our kids, and we saw some great data that showed that kids were being uh, more on task, less discipline referrals, um, still working on those kids on the bus. So while they're with us in the building, we're seeing some just some huge gains with that. And hopefully uh, we won't have to backtrack too much with that when we get started. Talked with East Middle today about the kids who we are sending on to them who were checking connect kids um, so that they can kind of coast with that as well. Um, we've listed a few uh, of our celebrations. Uh, one thing I'm really kind of pretty proud about because I'm a, a band geek. Um, we have a winter guard group that's uh, about 26 strong. They actually marched in the inaugural parade. Um, Heated um, and actually done pretty well, even in some high school classes. So Angela Miller and Adam Miller um, spearhead that group up. It's an after school group, it's a volunteer sort of thing. But they've really done a great job with that. Um, we're also pretty pleased with our uh, last year's BAS scores, and we've got talked to you since that. Ninety percent of our pro uh, primary kids were on grade level. Um, and then with next steps. We're working on some of the district's initiatives, but one of the things that we're seeing the most um, impact in our instruction is the high number of children we're getting from the Ukraine. Um, and the fact that there's not, um, our district's been great about getting us ESL teachers, but they don't speak that language either. We have people who speak Spanish, we have people who speak French, um, but we are really struggling with finding um, just a way to reach out to those families. We have connected with the church um, out on um, Brannon, um, and we actually put a position in place this year with a teaching assistant who actually is uh, just working with those kids who are, are straight up English learner, language learners. So they're meeting with her and then with our ESL person to at least just begin to teach those beginning English things. But I do think that's the next step for all of us. And I think my colleagues would say that for them, that's also an issue 
It's just one that we've not dealt with before. So different cultures, a lot of things that are, that are new um, for us for that part. So that's kind of my overview. Ooh, I'm even ahead of the game too. So. Val doesn't have his uh, his ten minute clock uh, on this. So uh, yeah, he'll he'll start giving hand signals in a few. Yeah, he told me he would. So that's why I was like, I was shooting for five. So. <laughs> But I'm happy to answer any questions or um, tell you anything else about what we got going on at Red Oak. It's a, I think it's a really good place. I watch, board members? I watch your attendance, Andy, and it continues to to hold. And I, I know some of the things you're probably doing um, one on one with kids. So I, I just want to I just want to say thank you for the work you put into attendance. I appreciate that. My guidance counselor works really hard with that. We've got a mentor system with that as well. My teachers are calling every day. Um, you guys provided two hours of help that's helping with the clerical piece of that so the teachers don't have to, so they can actually make the call and enter it um, and don't have to deal with the letters and all that. So we appreciate that support that you guys are giving us help with that part. So. Debbie, Bobby, Amy, anything, um, any questions from you guys? No, I'm good. Nope. What's BAS, Andy? Benchmark assessment. It's the primary assessment okay. we give all of our kids. Okay. It's a side, a side reading test. It's we do the map also, but that's a, we feel like is the best um, reading assessment because it's actually side by side with the kid. Okay. First and second grade, we give that. So. Andy, uh, anything uh, kind of on your list of requests, any resources you feel like you need that would uh, that would be impactful right now? Can, you, can we go back to school? That would be my big one right now. We are mourning, just mourning that for our kids. Um, I think that, and I know you all have helped with adding some ELL staff. I think that's our biggest piece right now is reaching those kids who don't speak our language and who no one does. Um, they and it's a it's a very different culture also that um, they don't want help really they really want to handle it on their own but then they don't really know how and so it's it's a it's something new that I've not dealt with in the twenty eight years I've been a principal so yeah I think it's a really different dynamic of very, how they yeah. yes mm -hmm. and it's it's going to take a a uh, learning dynamic on both parts but. Um, I think you can tackle it. <laughs> We're trying. We're trying. I think you can. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. Awesome. Andy, we appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, obviously, welcome to stay and hang out with us. Uh, but if you have other things you'd rather do with your evening and such a nice <laughs> evening, uh, we certainly understand if we see your uh, your box disappear. Okay. All right. And I, I don't rag on Andy. Uh, I think the unique thing that she really has brought to uh, Red Oak is her approach to developing and setting the high expectations. You know, it starts with assemblies in the morning, and then you just look at everything that's going on throughout the day. I think the students and the staff value uh, each moment, a moment, and they feel like they're in a special place getting some uh, unique services and supports. So I think Andy, Andy put a lot of energy and effort into that and, and said at the very beginning she was going to uh, uh, really set that tone early on when Red Oak started and she truly has done that so I'm just so appreciative of her. Uh, I'll echo that Matt. One thing I that struck me about Red Oak when I first visited it um, right after I, I was elected to the board was just the family feel it had to it. It was very welcoming. You walk in, uh, it almost feels like you're entering someone's living room and not a not a big, you know, antiseptic school. So, uh, yeah, absolutely good point. Thank you. We don't have one of those, Stephen. Say what? We don't have one of those. <laughs> Ever. Antiseptic schools. You might have to become a little antiseptic, though. Once uh, that's right. That's right. Correct. It's probably a word that's going to creep into our school system. So. Awesome. Andy, we appreciate it. Thank you so much for your time this evening. Thank you. You guys have a good evening. Thank All right. Take care. See you, Dexter. See you, Andy. Bye. All right. Can everyone see uh, what I'm sharing now uh, with uh, JCTC? Yes, sir. All right. Dexter, thanks for joining us. Um,
taking some time out this evening with us. Uh, I'll turn it over to you, sir. Absolutely. Thank you all very much. Before I get started, I wanted to share just with the board about 15 minutes ago here, I live on Lone Oak Drive, and about probably 20 West High seniors uh, accompanied by a couple of deputy sheriffs uh, had a little parade on Lone Oak. They were blowing the horns and having a good time. It certainly is different uh, to kind of witness that in my over 30 years working with the high school students. We stood out by the road since we figured out what was going on and waved at them. They were having a good time. So we're looking forward to seeing more of those folks. That's cool. I want to thank you all for the opportunity to let you know a couple of things, what's going on at JCTC. Uh, enrollment continues to increase in our career and technical education programs. So Superintendent Moore and myself and a few other folks went to Henderson back, uh, it's been, what, three years ago, and looked at those programs three, it might, might have been four years ago, looked at how many pathways they were offering and that type of thing and i'm just i'm so proud to say that a lot of those things the the gist of that work is starting to really kind of come into light where we can really tell what uh, is going to happen for jessamine county kids we've got more students completing more pathways and earning more industry certifications than we've ever had in the history of the schools we've got 4100 student enrollments that's duplicated numbers taking classes at JCTC. Proud to say that that's a thousand more enrollments, duplicated enrollments than any other locally operated current tech school in Kentucky. Uh, it's very unique. Uh, I spoke to my folks in Frankfurt today. Actually, I reached out to them last week and uh, just wanted to get some information in regards to the night's nice presentation. In regards to that, the new pathways that we are going to be offering, advanced manufacturing, we're currently offering diesel, health science, and some others mirror the high demand uh, pathways and jobs that Kentucky needs. Uh, right now, it's really come into focus with everything going on with the COVID crisis, that healthcare and those, those actual positions, those are our heroes. So I just couldn't be more proud to be a part of career and technical education right now. Our celebrations, a little cheesy here. We are number one in the state as far as our enrollment. Hmm. And what, what that basically means is we offer more career and technical education programs, pathways, and classes in any one of the 44 locally operated schools than anybody else in the state. And uh, I'm proud of that. And I'm especially proud because of the work that our PLCs are doing. We're serving all students, and it's not always the case in every district that they select and kind of handpick students to take courses in, in various uh, locally operated career and tech centers. We serve them all. We find a way to serve all of our students, including special needs students. Uh, we're going to be bringing online this next school year as we fine tune our, our curriculum. We're bringing online an ACE lab, just like East and West High. We're going to have that at JCTC, East and West to help with the career in tech ed in terms of students that might be struggling in those pathways. And we've got folks in place, and that's part of our strategic plan. We've got folks in place, to, we've got the right folks in place to help our students be successful. Our next steps, continue a couple of bullet points. We really wanna to continue to seek out industry certifications and those articulated credits, dual credit opportunities for our students so they can transition and matriculate from high school to post-secondary, high school to the next certification, high school to whatever life is, uh, whatever they're going, going to be doing when they graduate from high school. That may be a four-year degree, it may just be a certification, they may stair-step into their education and their career. So we wanna to continue to seek those out. We've done a great job with that, but we, we're, we're, we don't rest on our laurels. We wanna make sure we're including everyone and in every pathway in that. And then we finally want to continue to develop our community and industry partnerships for our CTE programs. We're going to need that support. Uh, we're going to need to mirror what our community and our regional area needs, provide the right jobs uh, for the next generation of workforce. So we're so excited to be a part of this work. Uh, it couldn't be a better time to be a part of career and technical education. And uh, I'm especially proud to be a part of Jessica. <laughs> Any board members with questions for Dexter? Nope. Uh, 
no. I just, great work. He always does such great work over there. Very proud. Really proud, Dexter, of, of that being top in the state and in <clears throat> local, uh, in local um, facilities. And, and you're right, around a lot, around a lot of the school districts I have worked in in the last few years, um, kids have to earn their way to their vocational programs through grades and behavior, and and you do, you take them all. So. Yeah, we're so big. Especially proud of that. You should be. Dexter, are there any programs that, what would be considered on deck for you guys uh, as you look to the future? I mean, are there any uh, particular fields or things like that that you're, you know, would kind of be considered next up uh, to bring in? Yes, sir. If, our net, if we had to select an, uh, another program area, by the way, we offer 10 program areas and 31 pathways. I failed to, to mention that. And that's 10 out of 16. I think the next big program area we need to really look at in this area is construction. And that includes all the various trades. And I'm not just talking carpentry, but masonry, plumbing, HVAC, welding. Uh, we would love, to, and specifically welding. We've got a lot of folks, uh, Donaldson right here in our community, we need to be providing welders for. Mm -hmm. Not only here, but Link Belt in Lexington. Uh, we're, in, we're in a prime location. I, I tell folks all the time as far as health science, we're in a prime location for health science. We should be a leader in health science. Well, we also need to be a leader in construction and manufacturing and, and the manufacturing piece will have two pathways one for an engineering pathway and the other one for folks that may not link go to a four-year program but might wind up working for link belt to keep all the machines running so that construction industrial maintenance piece that's that's the area we really need to focus on in my opinion and we'll have that presence through our ag courses but Dash is talking about really taking that to that next level, getting those people certified uh, yes. to where they're able to go out and uh, start working uh, pretty quick. Kentucky has, uh, it's in Fleming County, it's called the Kentucky Welding Institute. They will certify welders. We, I would love for Jessamine County to get to that level where we can certify welders right here in Jessamine. That's a good goal to have, Dexter. Mm -hmm. Anything else for Dexter this evening? No, nope, great job. No, very good job. And to just say one quick thing on uh, JCTC, you know it was coming, I can't stand it. But uh, uh, four years ago when we did go to Henderson, it really was uh, eye-opening. And we went there because the Kentucky Department of Education said they had the best program. So we were really wanting to see the best. And I think uh, looking at the uh, facilities we had a hard time wrapping our minds around how we could pull that off because we didn't have that space but you know and we we uh, felt strongly that we had the staff but uh, we were limited uh, because of uh, what we have at jctc and uh, now as i look at this and know where we're going to be next year uh, I, I am uh, quickly appreciating that we are going to be leading the way uh, in the state here and we're already getting uh, that reputation because people understand all the promising things coming out of JCTC and know the work that we're doing to move forward. So I'm just so excited to get to see facilities match the quality of our staff at JCTC. Just so excited. Absolutely. The facilities are in the culinary lab, based manufacturing. We are going to be the premier programs. We're going to have the curriculum and the staff behind it to make it the best. Yeah. Awesome. I walked through the diesel program one day. Um, it was during that time when money things were being collected for the flood victims, and it's it's really impressive, Dexter. Oh. Thank you. Awesome. Dexter, thanks for joining us this evening. Uh, you're excused unless you have uh, another reason you want to hang around and uh, and continue with us. All right. Thank you all so much for having me. Thanks a lot. All right. Have a great night. You as well. Um, so that brings us to Mark and Michael. who are going to talk to us a little bit about athletics. Val, anything to tee up here? Or do you want to go straight in with uh, with one or the other? 
Val, we can't hear you. He's ready. Roll for him. Roll it. <laughs> there we go. All right. Can everyone see the athletics document? Can everyone hear me? I apologize. I have no camera on my computer. Okay. No worries. Yeah, I can hear you, Mark. All right. So I'll, I'll go ahead then. Uh, thank you guys for asking us to uh, speak tonight about, about our athletic programs. Um, we'd like to start by showing our athletic mission statement. No, the athletic statement. The, yeah, there you go. Um, this statement is our vision of what athletics in Jessamine County should look like. Um, we took this statement and broke it into seven different focus areas that are going to help us create the overall vision of our athletic programs. Um, we send out surveys on a yearly basis to parents and athletes, uh, giving them to share both the good and bad of our programs. Um, this data is broken down into respective categories and analyzed. And with this data, we can better determine the overall strength and growth areas of the athletic department. We'll look at a couple of those here quickly tonight. Um, the first area centers around the athletes and the coaches. Um, the goal outlines a specific area we're fo focused on, as well as the why. Um, we, we, we use that as a focus point, so y'all give you kind of glance over that as I speak. Um, we have a target for each data point. And as you can see, we've stayed above these targets consistently in most areas. Um, we analyzed the data to see what factors could have contributed to any lower numbers. And based on this data, we work with our coaches to focus on targeted growth areas that can be addressed through various forms of PD. Um, we use a thing called 3D coaching that we give to our uh, coaches. Uh, NFHS has a lot of uh, free online classes for stuff, as well as coach mentoring and so forth like that. Um, and as you can see, most of the area points reflect growth over the last three years so next mark the one thing i would point out is one of the areas that doesn't uh reflect growth is probably one of the bigger ones of concern right and again this again year to year depending on the coaching um you could have situations where coaches may not have done their best and have maybe moved on on their own accord or by choice from us. Um, so that's how we can reflect on the data and analyze our coaching stats from there. If we can see consistently low marks on a coach, then we can address that with that coach. And then that determines what action is taken um, to deal with that. So yeah, the 3.95 is the one that kind of got us. Uh, but obviously we've done some research on the data. I think we've figured out why it's there. And uh, we've, we've taken steps to address that so that next year, obviously, we can show the growth we need to see in it. Got it. Thanks, Mark. Yeah. So, and then this next slide is kind of more about that uh, related to coaching athletes. There's a few points below the target areas, but most have shown the increase over the past three years. And through our use of evaluations and rounding discussions with our coaches, we can see these growth areas and focus, again, our PD and our, you know, mentor, mentoring, excuse me, on that aspect of it. So. Very data driven. And turn it to Michael. Uh, can y'all hear me well? Yes, sir. All right, fantastic. Uh, so, one of our second goals that we wanted to focus on this year uh, was uh, providing a positive image of our athletics departments, both inside and outside of Justin County. Uh, the reason this is important is because our community being behind us is vital to our success yes. uh, both, for both athletic departments. Uh, there are several ways we can look at that. Uh, one of the big ways is, is uh, through community service projects. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of our teams use summertime to be able to get out in the community, get into food banks and stuff like that. And this, this summer, that might not be a viable option, but we're still looking uh, for ways that we can get out in the community. Um, uh, other things we look at are uh, our numbers in the visit nick.com ball are actually now it's visit just.com ball. Uh, not only the number of participants, but the number of people that we see coming to those games. Uh, and then also we, we stress uh, having a low number of disqualifications amongst our coaches and student athletes. Uh, and you can see you know, the goal is always zero. You might have one or two here. And again, that feeds into what Mark had said about uh, that can help us give information about coaches and, uh, you know, how, how we need to educate them through PDs and stuff. Uh, Mr. Scrivener, if you can go to the next slide, please. Uh, so how do we provide a positive image? 
Uh, we've gotten several things that we focus on. Uh, first, we've got a big social media presence mm -hmm. with our Twitter accounts and then uh, also trying to get on the radio. Uh, we also have partnerships with all of the youth leagues in county uh, in a big one that they're starting up volleyball here soon. Uh, we also like to partner with our elementary schools, uh, you know, the East schools with East High, the West schools with West High. I thought one of the fun things we did this year was uh, we had uh, first and second grade basketball games in between some of our high school basketball games to get those kids on the court and get them time with, uh, with our high school players because that just builds a program. Uh, and then lastly is our program successes just speak for themselves and uh, having successful programs will keep the community involved in those programs. Uh, Mr. Scribner, um, and our third goal that we focused on this year was uh, providing superior program of interscholastic athletics uh, that includes appropriate level act of activities for every participant. So we're talking about every level of participant and we can look at our numbers over the last few years and whilst there is, you know, up, down, here and there, across the board, you're seeing more, participant, more participants at the elementary, middle, and high school level. And also, we put uh, our tickets on there as well so that you can see yearly how our ticket sales are doing. And last but not least, yeah, this is our facility updates. That we, uh, we have a facilities uh, sheet that we has our priorities that we deal with. Uh, on a regular basis. These are some of the main priorities that we had, and believe it or not, most of these have been addressed this past year or are being addressed this summer. The weightlifting equipment, we're probably in the current progress of changing some of that. The baseball fields at both places and softball fields have been improved. The gym floor, I believe, is being a bit out right now at West High. Baseball just got a softball or just got a scoreboard donated to us here at West. I think East got their football scoreboard donated to them last year. And yes. obviously, to the track surface upgrades at the middle school now that the soccer complex has moved to the high school. Um, the, the track surface, um, well, let me ask about that for just a second. Are, where are we in terms of how long has it been since we've done that? And, uh, and, and when are we scheduled to do that again? This may be a, more of a valid question. So uh, that's my. Uh, well, I'll step in and let you know that we have, we're about due for that cycle to have that worked on. It's been about 10 to 15 years since the last time that it was done. And we're really at the life expectancy, especially the one that sits behind West Middle at this point. And as we're moving forward, that is the one track that we have that meets all regulations. The East, the one that has been used by East for a period of time really does not meet all the regulations that we need it to. That's so the one really over behind the learning village file? Yes, correct. Okay. So what we're wanting to do is really upgrade the one facility to make it a good countywide facility by really improving some of the field events, such as shot put discus, putting it on the infield, since we won't be using the, uh, the soccer field on the inside anymore. So we're going to be doing that. I feel like we're probably a year or two away, depending on how budgets work. But we have patched it to make it make it work for now but there are it's going to need to be addressed i would say within the next two three years at the latest as far as resurfacing and uh, it is the next major project that we have on the needs assessment for athletics for sure yeah for athletics okay. uh, uh, mark val michael uh, one of the things that we've kind of had some informal discussions about uh, as it relates to facilities has been marketing and things like that. Um, I know I've asked in the past whether or not it's possible that we could look at doing some sponsorship with the new floor over at West to help defray the costs that go along with that. Has there been any movement on that? At this point, we have not reached out to anybody directly. We still there was a gentleman that we had spoken to that you had kind of directed our way. We've been kind of waiting to get some feedback from them as far as kind of next steps. We haven't heard anything at this particular point. But going back and doing any kind of sponsorship is not a difficult thing to do where you can take back some of that floor, put something back down on it. That's not a very difficult thing to do. So whether we do it right now is not as timely as if we were to do it. It can be done at any point, I guess what I'm trying to say. Yeah, got it. Just always trying to think. You can buy like the space and go on the wall. Yeah. Sorry, Mark. I didn't mean to speak over you. Oh, that's quite. No, that's fine. I didn't mean to interrupt. I apologize. 
Uh, I was just saying that anytime we can get creative with these revenue streams um, that might make it allow us to move a little faster on a project, you know, perhaps the one with track and field, if there's ways to bring in some sponsorship that could let us get more aggressive in our timeline, I think that's something we always need to be looking at. So hopefully we can, hopefully we can get bingo rolling. And yeah, I things. know obviously as you say this in this current climate, it's not the easiest thing in the world. So yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> that unfortunately timing has been bad, but that doesn't mean that that Absolutely. won't open itself up in the future. Absolutely. Good deal guys. Board members, anything uh, for Michael and Mark? No. No. <laughs> nope. I appreciate the tracking of that data on on the surveys. I think that's a wise step. It certainly drives decision making. It certainly yeah. drives what we want to do with that particular program. So right. I do appreciate what they do. All right, guys. If there's no other questions or comments, thanks for joining us this evening. Thanks Thank for having us. Thank you very us. much, Mark. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, guys. Take care. You too. Uh, what have we got now? Uh, maintenance. maintenance. Plans. Yes. Yeah, if you can pull that one up. I'm going to talk to this one. John Clemens is on this. Um, John Clemens is on this call, but I'm going to talk this particular um, presentation. You had asked back, I think it was at the either January or February meeting when John actually presented, asked him to look at some ways that he could make some impact with maintenance, um, some budgetary impacts, some of those next steps that he wants to do. So what, what this is a presentation about next steps. So Stephen, if you'll go to the next page. One of the big things that we did at one school was uh, Wilmore Elementary a number of years back, and this allowed them to get a high energy um, rating from a national level was going to what's called a dark campus. Dark campus is a way to really reduce electric electricity consumption. And basically the way the, the way it works is at a certain point at night when everybody is out, we shut the entire campus down. Interior, exterior, all lights go down and bring them back up before anybody comes in. It has saved tremendous amount of energy. It saves on lighting. And one thing that it really does do is discourage vandalism. If you'll go to the next page. Um, here's an idea of what it costs. Um, right now, we, have, we approximately spend about $1.2 million a year on electricity. That's a tremendous amount of money, especially now that we're adding more and more space. The way on a conservative side, from a national level, going to a dark campus can help us save approximately 5% of that cost at a minimum up to 10%. So you're looking anywhere from $60,000 to $120,000 annually just by moving to this type of a project. So if you go to the next page. So it isn't new. It's been around for a number of years since the 1970s. There's a, there's a website here. I'm not going to go to a whole lot of the details, but it is something that has been around for a period of time and has proven to be successful. This just happens to be one with a school in San Antonio, a study that was done there. If you'll move to the next one for me, Stephen. There are specific tips that we go through when we're trying to implement a dark campus. When we went through this, when we implemented the dark campus at Wilmore Elementary, we schedule lighting around the school. So at 11 o'clock at night, all the lights go out. At 6 o'clock the next morning, they all become available again. Therefore, during the times in which there are no employees, it is a dark campus. We use timers, link controls. We let the school community know, especially our law enforcement, our neighbors. We make it a community a community commitment. And the goal is the total blackout. One of the nice things about this is it does create a setting that if there's any light on a campus, it is obviously someone there who shouldn't be there. And to this point, that has been very, very effective in the places that we have. There are a lot of people that drive by those locations. We ask that the uh, law enforcement check on it on a regular basis, but even the neighbors help out with that situation too. If you go to the next one for me. So this already kind of talked a little bit about this and it gives an example of a community in our state, Corbin Independent, where they actually saw vandalism reduced. But vandalism really isn't an issue that we deal with, but it is kind of a nice byproduct of it. If you go to the next page for me. So there are options about getting this accomplished, which is what you had asked them to do. One of those um, options is to hire an outside vendor to come in and actually implement this on the school 
uh, at six different schools here. You'll see uh, West High, Roseland Wall, West Middle, Brookside, Nicholasville, and East High. Those schools right now would need to have about $42,950 worth of work done to those particular schools in order to just begin this process. There is some other work that needs to be done at a couple other schools, East Middle and Red Oak, but that's more of a programming with the current way that we do our lighting. So one option is to hire an outside contractor to come in, and this is an example of a quote that was given to us. So we'll go to the next option. The next page talks about a second option, which I think has more value to it, which is instead of paying an outside electrician to do it, let's, let's look at using that money to offset an electrician in our own setting to be able to not only accomplish this work, but there are many more opportunities when you are talking about changing lighting from um, fluorescent lighting to LED lighting, which saves a tremendous amount of money. Looking at individual pro projects throughout, so looking to hire a second electrician. It's also one of the areas that we just cannot keep up with the demand we have one electrician at this point, and we're just struggling keeping up with that demand. If you'll go to the next page for me, Stephen. Get there? No, I'm not. There we go. So talk about the cost comparisons between the two. I gave you a little chart to understand. Yeah, it's basically you're saving $60,000 overall cost project for option one is $42,950. There's really no cost on the other. However, there is a staffing cost. And even though I said approximately $35,000, it's only going to be $35,000 to hire a new person because there would be some restructuring of the current staff, which would allow us to save some money towards this particular person by kind of rearranging the current staff that they have right now. Uh, potential future savings, we wouldn't have any with option one. We'd always have to kind of continue to hire out a contractor because our current electrician just can't get to these additional uh, energy savings projects where we would have a second person who would be able to allow us to do those type, that type of work moving forward at all times without. And currently right now, we spend $15,000 outside of our current budget annually just to keep up with our basic stuff. And this would allow us to be able to maintain where we're going. So if you'll go to the next page for me there, Stephen. So in conclusion, we believe that it would be best if we would hire another electrician because it would allow us not only to complete this project we showed you, but also be able to maintain any future energy savings projects and stay caught up on all the electrical work orders that we do now and no longer have to hire outside contractors to come in and do that work. So if, any, if you have any questions, please uh, ask away. This is this is good, Val. Um, I, I, what about other uh, energy saving projects? I mean, is there anything you can give us now, just besides dark campus? Are there any, uh, you know, hardware swap outs, things like that? Well, that's one of the things. That's one of the reasons why I had John on the call because I wanted him to be able to speak to some of those. But I do know that some of them is just like lighting and gyms and various other things. So, John, if you've got a couple things you can toss out, that'd be great. Sure. Uh, assuming you all can hear me at this point. Yes. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Great, great. Uh, thank you all for having me here. But uh, we already have a couple of estimates out for gym lighting at East High and West High. And uh, hoping to move it on that soon. It would greatly reduce the cost of that if we could do it in-house as opposed to hiring it out. And uh, another thing, our district's always been very proactive on energy management. But uh, we are so proactive that we got a lot of T5 lighting in right before LEDs became feasible. And we're getting to the point now where it's, there's a, a energy payback argument to be made to start switching out some of the T5s we have. So having that le extra electrical help would enable me to continue with energy saving projects all during the year. John, is it possible to maybe get some, some estimates around you know, the expenditures that are needed um, for some of these gym lights and other areas where we could go to LED lights and, and start, I guess, the, the meter running on these energy savings? Uh, absolutely. I already have quotes for East and West High both. Okay. And then uh, I, can, I can get it for all the locations that we need it where 
we have the best payback. Yeah, I mean, if it's something you want to compile maybe and share with us via email, it, we can maybe bring it up at, at, a, at the next work session or board meeting um, and just kind of talk through it, obviously, in, in, you know, in concert with Val around what would be needed to start making the district energy, you know, obviously it's going to be something done in phases. Um, but I, I think right. there would be a lot of interest on the board just to see kind of where the where the expenditure would be and then how fast we'd be able to recoup some of that money. Absolutely. I, I can definitely lay out a, a path for, uh, you know, continued path for energy savings. Absolutely. That'd be great. And, and uh, yeah, just great. to clarify, too, what he was saying with the dark campuses, that was his first recommendation for yeah. movement on, on yeah. some of this energy. Yeah. energy. It has the most payback and the least impact. Absolutely. That makes sense. So are we... Um, are you looking tonight for an answer about this additional position, John and Val, on the electrician? Well, I don't know that we necessarily have to have a decision tonight. However, it would be nice to be able to move on it sooner because if we're going to be doing any kind of restructuring of current staff within that particular um, department, our, our deadline for making some of those kinds of decisions is quickly approaching. Yeah. And... And honestly, if we're not going to get the go ahead, we will just maintain the status quo and go on and try to do some of this work outside. My biggest concern is just long term and being able to make these kinds of impacts because we will always have to hire out to be able to do this. Um, and, and there is some concern also about uh, con continuity with our maintenance folks. They are of an older generation and we know we're going to be losing some of them over time so it's always nice to have double of some of those so that we can have some continuity as we move right. through and kind of keep that moving right absolutely yeah, I, that's I'm just done to one electrician servicing and with with all of the construction coming on um he is very he is fantastic at what he does and does a great job and very thorough but because of his thoroughness and his ability to do it well and to do it safely doesn't allow him to keep up with the pace of yes. work that has to be able to be done yeah well I, I mean i'm in favor of i think it makes sense um so yeah i, I other board members weigh in here on what, on what your thoughts are same. I agree. We we did the same thing with uh, HVAC uh, by yeah. adding, and it, it was a well, savings painter, force. Did you bring a painter on with the, you know kind of the same logic behind that? Right. And it has, and the painter has saved us a tremendous amount of money over this time, and probably one of the best hires we've made, making those kinds of impacts. We talked about that a couple, uh, couple me uh, at the last meeting when John talked. So okay. Then the, it is a position. Denise, Debbie, Amy, do uh, you guys want to weigh in here? I, I kind of said in my, I'm, I'm stunned we've only that we've made it this long with just one electrician. I'm good. Yeah. Okay. This is not, if you all give us this, it's a position that we can just go ahead and post because we already have the current position approved. It would just be adding so that we could go ahead and post that and start that process if you all are good with it. I think so. That makes sense. Yeah, I'm thank good you. With it. Okay. Val, John, thank you. Thank you all. Bye. Yeah. All right, Matt, do, you, do we have anything to share, uh, any documents to share on this one, or are you just going to walk us through it? No, it was just discussion. Okay. Yeah, I think I've shared everything uh, for the graduation uh, that – that I was going to reference, but uh, uh, I was going to address one question that was brought up uh, by a board member um, for our high school graduation ceremony. Uh, if we do have uh, a student that doesn't have access to a vehicle uh, to uh, participate in that parade, I just wanted you guys to know that uh, we have uh, coordinated uh, opportunities for those students to uh, get a ride uh, uh, with the, either utilizing a uh, Jessam County school vehicle or uh, a, a volunteer that I think was brought up by a couple board members wanting to make sure that we were addressing that in the event somebody doesn't have a vehicle. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and then everything else is really 
uh, specific to you guys. I just want to make sure you are aware of this information and to answer any other questions you may have. Uh, we are hopeful that you guys will participate in uh, passing out the diplomas. And uh, what we're going to do is have the graduates on uh, the passenger side, and they will be able to, uh, or you'll be able to hand that to them uh, at their window. And uh, uh, just want to extend that opportunity again. I hope you guys are uh, able to do that. Absolutely. Um, yes, definitely. Who's get arrested? But, uh, yeah, yeah. I just passed the, I just passed the, the ambulance. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'd also recommend that you guys uh, try to be there an hour uh, ahead of time because you'll be coming in the same way as uh, uh, the guest. So you know you can anticipate probably 150 at the Providence ceremony and then uh, probably 300 at the other two. So you may want to uh, consider doing that. Uh, it is off of uh, Jessman Station. Uh, the way that you would enter and you're going to see right as you get on the drag strip that there'll be parking spaces with your name uh, at those right at the fire truck because that's where you're going to be handing out the uh, diplomas we'll be on the end close to the hangar right yes we'll yeah. be on the 27 the side the not the Jessman station the Jessman side. station yeah yeah okay, okay. And so we have we are going to hand out the diplomas. Yes, ma'am. And okay. you may want to do it in larger groups, uh, just so, because, you know, at that point, unless it's lifted, anticipate you'll be in mask and the gloves uh, to meet the wow. requirements. Uh, but, yeah, and, and if you're not interested in doing those two, then we can we can let one of you do it or three of you do it or whatever the case may be. But, but uh but yeah, that, that would be an expectation. Okay. And then um, the, the principals and I were planning on uh, just wearing button down, like, you know, we're going to be out there and it's probably going to be hot. So we figured we would just go a little bit more casual for this. Hot and shorts? Uh, maybe, maybe. <laughs> I just wanted to tell you uh, what going to be in. Yeah. I want Stephen to wear his black gown. Yes. His robe. <laughs> yep. Robe. The robe is necessary. Yes. It'll be Do nice. It. I'll be passed out. Do it. You're not going to live that down, are you? <laughs> yeah, awesome. I'll, be on, I'll be on Bobby's back. I remember Bobby. <laughs> Bobby said you did that. So I don't that he was going to wear. Yeah, my smoking jacket. Yes, yeah, sir. Right. right. That's fine. Awesome. Matt, are you going to be releasing? <laughs> are you going to be posting details of this, uh, or sending a communication, district-wide communication out within the next yes. day or so? Uh, anticipate it'll go out tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, and, and that'll go to students, parents, and then, uh, a, a separate one to staff. And I, and I'll send you guys copies of both of them, so okay. you have all the details. <laughs> all right. And that was all I was going to tell you about graduation, unless there's any questions. We're good. Nope. Oh, we're good. Oh, how many tickets do they get? <laughs> I'm yeah. sarcastic. Sorry. You had to Just, go there. Yeah. I did. I did. Sorry. They can fill up their car with as many as they can get in. Awesome. You better car. bring an old Cadillac. I was going to say, my father-in-law said he would be happy to drive the bike. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right. Budget. And, and next is just the, the budget. I wanted to just give you guys a little bit of the information that we've been processing and talking about because there are so many unknowns now coming with uh, as a result of uh, COVID-19. Jason, feel free to chime in on this. But I just want to give you a little bit of information because I think this is one of the very first times that we're going to uh, go into a year with a whole lot of uh, uh, unexpected uh, information coming our way and, and there's a lot of uh, uh, half information being shared with us. Uh, you know, one is we are getting our uh, seek allocations, but we anticipate that that's going to be adjusted as the year goes on. So we're not going to count on the amount 
that uh, they're forecasting because I'm sure all of you guys have heard that uh, uh, the state is uh, anticipating generating much less revenues. I've heard it's in the 20% range that it's going to be reduced. I saw a headline the other day that said that lottery sales are so far down that that's going to affect the, the seek allocation. So. Yeah, so, so we just anticipate that uh, we can't count on those funds um, and, and uh, just want you guys to be aware of that. Um, at the federal level, they are trying to offset some of that. And uh, Jessamine County's amount that we're going to get with the CARES Act is $1.8 million. But already when we start talking about the things that we're going to have to do with those funds, uh, I don't know even how far that's going to carry us. Uh, we are talking about uh, how to utilize those because the main intent for those is to uh, recoup monies that we've already spent related to COVID-19 and then to provide uh, services uh, to address uh, the gaps and, and the things that uh, have occurred academically as a result of COVID-19. So those are two big things I want you to have on your radar. And then uh, other things that we're not sure of at this point is uh, if we will have a increase in preschool student enrollment that was unanticipated because as you are aware uh, the majority of the students that qualify qualify for that program qualify as a financial reasons so we could have a unanticipated surge of students that would qualify for preschool next year so we're tracking that but a lot of unknowns until we actually start the enrollment process uh, the other thing that we're not sure uh, what the implications will be but we do anticipate that across the nation uh, that we're going to see likely a reduction in enrollment for the next year and uh, that's going to be uh, families that are going to elect to homeschool or keep their students on some type of a virtual program until they're confident enough that uh, everything is passed with COVID-19. We're already seeing some evidence in Jessamine County. Uh, uh, it's not on a large scale by any means, but we anticipate that we're going to see, not see the growth that we anticipated uh, because of uh, uh, this being one of those, those uh, contributing factors. And then the only other one that I think is a, uh, item that we always need to keep on keep in mind is uh, with special education there is the expectation to uh, meet the prescribed uh, services that are outlined on the individual education plan and at the federal level the expectation is that we make up all of this the missed opportunities that have occurred so we anticipate we may have to create uh, opportunities for uh, our, our students with special needs moving forward if they haven't made the progress that uh, we would like to see and the term for that that is used uh, 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 in the special education world is uh, compensatory education so we may have to look for opportunities to do that uh, jason is there anything you want to add to my comments not really um you kind of hit everything there's a ton of unknowns right now um i'm a little concerned with um more of our tax revenue from the local side with motor vehicle taxes since those are completely shut down right now no one's paying so we're not going to be getting those trickling in um it's the same thing with utility tax um revenue and then come fall what's all this going to do to our property tax revenue um but i think you've hit everything that I know of, um, they're giving us a ton of flexibility in terms of spending our state and federal grant money. Um, most of them are getting extended, so we can hopefully use those since we've been out of school for a month. Um, but no clue yet. Should know more in about six months, hopefully. So, so lots of unknowns sure. that we typically uh, are fully aware of at this point and I just wanted you guys to know what's going on so you can worry as much as we did uh, so, so that you are uh, aware of some potential implications.
start buying lottery tickets. Please. I was going to say, Jason, are you just, uh, you just playing the lottery every night with uh, with these sixty thousand dollars we're going to save in uh, utility bills over the next uh, year? Just start buying tickets. No, that sixty thousand is already gone. <laughs> Awesome. Well, guys, I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for the update, Matt. As, as, as unpleasant as that is to hear, you know, <laughs> what, what can you do now except wait and see? All right. All right. Okay. Anything else, guys? That That's all I had. I don't know if there's any questions for us. Anyone? Debbie, Amy, Denise, Bobby? No, have conversations started yet, Matt, about the beginning of the school year? Um, I... Yes, we've uh, been working quite a bit on that. Uh, a lot of the work that we're going to be doing before school closes out is identifying uh, what standards haven't been addressed at the end of the year so that we can start next year with that. Uh, we've been talking a lot of uh, budget implications. We are moving with the mindset that we are going to start in August, but uh, starting to carry on those conversations uh, of what if we don't. Right. Uh, so again, a lot of unknowns, but but uh, we are trying to stay connected to all all of our um, Kentucky Department of Education resources and, and uh, other districts and our co-op to make sure we're as informed as we can be on it. And I do think if any of those decisions are made to change the start time or anything, but I think we will have to come together and really talk about restructuring things pretty differently. So very hopeful that, that we're not going to be at that point. But but we are uh, moving forward as if uh, school is going to start yeah. uh, as it, as uh, we anticipate. Probably the biggest thing, Denise, with our CARES Act dollars is we're uh, going to really want to plus up our after-school programs. Uh, you know, that used to be funded very well in years past, and I think for the past 10 years, not so much. But I anticipate that we will offer a lot of after-school programs for students that aren't showing mastery uh, on yeah. your pieces of content. So uh, we'll probably kind of go back to a model that we used 15 years ago. All right. Anything else, guys? I'm good. Good. I'm good. Thank you all. All right. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. Here. All right. Yeah. Good night. Good night.